after arguably the best week of early season skiing at places like Keystone, Arapaho Basin, Winter Park, and Loveland, it was time to return to Utah to take care of some much needed van work. To pass the time, in this episode we go over all of the camera gear I take with me on the mountain to create my ski productions. What's going on squad, welcome back to another episode of season three. I unfortunately don't have a ski video for you guys today. If you've been following along, I came back to Park City this weekend. I had to get uh, my driver's license renewed, which I passed the test this morning. I know you guys didn't have a lot of faith in me uh, and I only got one question wrong about railroad crossings. So let's hope we don't come to any railroad crossings. But anyways, I figured in the meantime, we could talk about some of the other questions you guys have had and we should be back skiing early next week. So just a few days to take care of some stuff here in Luna, which is uh, necessary to really propel us for the ski season. But I wanna talk about the camera gear that I bring with me on the ski hill. I'm gonna start things off with the main piece of the, uh, the whole thing. And this is kind of my main camera rig that I'm bringing out on the hill, this is what I'm using essentially to film all of the cinematic shots you guys see are filmed with this setup. The camera itself is the Canon EOS R6. I picked this up in April of this year, so all of the vlogs that you guys saw last year in season two and the beginning of three was actually filmed on this camera, which is the EOS R, which is just um, sort of the, uh, you know, the predecessor of this camera. On the Canon EOS R, I have a small rig cage. Um, I didn't used to use cages until I started using them on my cinema cameras. And honestly, um, I don't know if I could ever go back. It just adds some extra protection um, and a nice mounting point for the tripods and stuff like that. On the top of this rig, um, I use a Rode Video Micro. This isn't the best mic out there, but it doesn't take batteries. I don't need to remember to turn it on. And it just is a pure example of the gear not getting in the way of the story because Years ago when I was vlogging, I had a different mic and I would forget to turn the mic on and I would lose all the audio. So with this, I don't have to worry about it. It's small, it's cheap, um, and it just kind of does the trick um, enough for YouTube essentially. So um, that's the mic I'm rocking on top. And then probably the piece of gear that I have experimented with the most is the lens choice. Um, and I have settled on the Canon um, 24 to 70 f 2.8 typically a lot of my vlogs are shot on a 16 to 35 lens which is very very wide um, especially for things like being in luna and talking to the camera but on the ski hill i don't want to be changing lenses at all and so i needed a very versatile lens that could be wide enough to vlog with um, but also give me some extra range um, to uh, shoot more cinematic stuff um, zoom in maybe to something that's in the distance and that is kind of how I stumbled upon the 24 to 70. I find that it is just barely wide enough, um, but it gives me a lot of um, versatility punching into 70 mil. So if I could ever design a camera lens, I would love a 16 to 105 f 2.8 lens. That would be like unreal. It would be huge and it would be probably $5,000, but a lens with that sort of versatility would be would be pretty amazing. So on the front of the lens, I rock a Tiffin Black Pro Mist one quarter strength filter. It's actually on this lens right now. That's merely just kind of a stylistic effect. And then I also rock a Peter McKinnon variable ND two to five stop filter. I really dislike ND filters. I think they're such a hassle. Um, they always degrade the image quality in my opinion but um, I don't like using it. I'm not really a stickler about it, but I use that to help cut down some of the light so I can shoot uh, wide open and get the blurry background that uh, you guys might see sometimes. So all of this mounts on another love-hate thing of mine, which is the Joby Gorilla Tripod. Again, this is just one of those pieces of equipment that like you just need to have. This thing is really nice because it allows me to put the camera down kind of wherever uh, to shoot a time-lapse or all of the shots where I'm walking in and out of frame. This is how I'm doing it is with this tripod, I can wrap it around a tree if I need to or wrap it over a railing to get a time-lapse. And so I honestly could not vlog without this piece of equipment. They're really nice because you know, once you have your flip out, you can hold it out and it kind of acts as like an extension to talk to you guys. Um, and then also have a way to kind of carry the camera, make it a little bit easier. So this is really the main piece of equipment that is essentially the backbone to all of the videos. Now we are back on the camera that I usually film on. I'm curious if you guys can tell the difference in image quality or not. But um, the second pillar of my camera setup, my camera gear, is the uh, GoPro Max. For the most part, this camera sits on the front of my helmet. I get questions a lot about where's my GoPro mounted. 
Um, how do I have it mounted? It is mounted right on the front. So it's not mounted on the top or on the side. I mount it right on the front. I feel like that gives you the best sort of POV um, setup. It's kind of low profile, so you don't really notice it that much. And this is really where this GoPro Max lives. I would say 80% of the day. Um, I put it on in the morning and I almost rarely even uh, take it off. So the other piece of equipment that I use this with quite often and is honestly one of my most favorite ways to use this 360 camera is to mount it on a selfie pole. So if this camera isn't living on my helmet, it's usually on this pole and just alternates between those two areas. The stick that I'm using is called the Backpack 270 Pro S. It's a carbon fiber pole and it extends really, really long. I don't even know if I can get it as long as it can go in the van. So um, it has like a few parts. Here's like the first part and then it has this bottom section that opens up and the van, I mean, I'm basically standing at the back of the van and I can touch you guys with this. So to get some really cool, almost drone looking shots, kind of looks like the camera's floating out in front of me. This is the setup I'm using. It's probably about six feet um, long. I hold it in my hand here and I kind of drape my pole in my hand and so what's really cool about the 360 cameras is that the software actually um, deletes the pole so it gives you that floating camera effect so this is a really cool angle as a one-man band to uh, alternate in there um, to kind of give like a follow cam perspective it works really well when you're in trees or in tight spaces um, and you can get super creative with um, how you use this you can almost make it look like a drone shooting top down um, whatever the case is. So last but not least is a trusty standard GoPro Hero. This is the Hero 10. Um, I had this since last year and I've honestly really enjoyed using this camera. It usually just stays in my coat pocket um, attached to the uh, GoPro pole mount. This is another, I mean, if you're gonna get one mount when you ski, you gotta get the GoPro pole mount. They made this for skiing. So it just slides in there like that. Then I can take my ski pole here. I usually mount it underneath the basket. And now you have a camera that's looking back at you. Um, it has this really cool quick release sort of thing where I can turn it. And now if I do a follow cam of someone, um, I have a follow cam ready to go and I don't need an extra pole to hold um, or stick or anything like that. So in terms of the versatility of this mount, extremely high for the size. So I use this camera um, to get some really slow motion shots in front of me. If it's ever a pow day, I'm like going with this camera because I can just get those crazy, super slow face shots. Um, and it's just another piece of equipment to help um, add some variety and spice into the videos so it doesn't all look the same. On the GoPro Hero, I also use ND filters. Uh, when the condition's warranted, if it's a nice sunny day out, um, I will throw an ND filter on the front of my GoPro just to help slow down the shutter speed and give you guys that realistic motion blur to give you guys a sense of speed um, and just make it look a little bit more natural to you. So it's kind of little things like that that subconsciously help tell a story and make it even more of a, an immersive watch and production for you guys. Um, and so while they can be kind of funky to use and I don't, again, I don't love NDs, they do always produce some really sweet shots, especially um, if you can get the camera close to the ground and really get the ground like, you know, whizzing in front of the camera looks really cool. So the bags themselves are important to talk about. There's two bags. There's one main bag that I probably use 90% of my skiing. Um, you guys have seen this one if you guys have been checking out the videos. This is the original GoPro Seeker backpack. Um, this must have came out literally, I don't know, maybe like six, seven or eight years ago. Um, and it's GoPro's sort of like adventure camera bag. I really, I have a lot of camera bags because I, you know, I've done video for a long time and this has just been the best fit for me on the hill because it's really small, it's light, it's weatherproof. Um, and it fits the camera, you know, almost perfectly. And it gives me a little bit extra room for other batteries or stuff like that. Um, but the biggest thing is that it's super small. So getting on and off the lift, it's not really a bother to other people. Um, I can swing it over my shoulder easily. I can put my tripod in the side. I can fit the selfie stick in here. So the other bag I have is from Low Pro. This is a Low Pro Powder 500. So this is a massive bag. This bag was built for skiing and photography. I don't really recommend this bag to like the average, you know, person going on a resort because it's really meant for backcountry touring. It has slats here to hold your skis um, on either side. And then it has a whole ICU camera unit here where I could fit 
you know, a bunch of camera gear. So the times I will use this is when I know that I'm going for a bigger hike. So I use this at Aspen Highlands. Um, I should have used this at Big Sky. Um, but the point is when I go out for the day and I know I'm gonna be doing a hike that is long, I don't wanna be carrying my skis, I will use this because I can put my skis on the side of the bag and it just makes the hiking experience a lot better. However, the biggest part with that bag is that it is huge. So getting on and off the lift, you're like smacking people in the lift line, skiing with that thing on your back. It's like, I don't even, you know, I don't even jump in the air because it's so big and just, it's not like the best riding experience, but it's, it's more of a, of like a, a workhorse to help get gear to a spot. Um, and so I will use that bag, but like I said, it's not really my go-to uh, first option if I can help it, so. But of course, like with anything, like with skis, with boots, no matter what it is, it's not necessarily the gear itself that uh, produces the result. It's more or less the operator um, who is using that, that piece. I just feel like this is the kit that I've developed that um, can help me kind of get a little bit of everything. It's not the perfect kit, but it's good enough to capture what I need. So whether if you're looking to make YouTube videos or just you know, want to learn how to make your GoPro better or how can you capture clips of your kids skiing down. Um, I hope this might have shed some light with that. If you guys are interested, um, I could talk more about the actual settings I use to capture the clips because I think that's equally important is kind of the, uh, the software inside parts of these. But uh, I honestly love camera gear. I feel like I'm a photographer and cinematographer first, um, skier and everything else second because um, everything is just stemmed off my love of making videos. So I have no problem talking about gear, but uh, yeah, I hope this shed some light. If you guys are still stuck around um, and you haven't checked out some of the recent videos, we were in Colorado for about 10 days. So uh, get caught up on some of the recent ski videos and we will be back skiing um, hopefully by Tuesday or Wednesday next week. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see all of you guys in the next episode of the Good Eats Fam. Peace out.